Good morning. My presentation today is entitled The Use of the Prod Software in Acoustic Analysis. The plan I propose to you is first to present the basic elements of speech production and speech acoustics, and in the following, the main techniques for acoustic analysis in product, for instance, annotating the speech signal, spectral analysis, duration analysis fundamental frequency analysis and intensity analysis. One of the main features of PRAT is the uh, uh, um, availability of scripting, the possibility of um, doing um, programs to uh, make um, several of these analysis that will be illustrated today completely automatic. But um, because of the lack of time, I, I, let, I will let you to read about scripting in the corresponding paper. As regards speech um, and as well as, well as animal vocalizations, um, uh, there's a main source of sound. And in the case of speech, I illustrate uh, here the respiratory and the laryngeal subsystems. And you can see uh, here top left um, the movement of of the, of the muscles uh, to, um, uh, uh, to make possible inhalation and expiration. You can see in this ellipsis that inhalation from a speech is much um, deeper than in, 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 in comparison with normal uh, breathing. And, uh, and uh, of course, expiration is much, much more longer, six times. Uh, longer than inhalation, which allows <coughs> the majority of the sounds of the language to be made. As this is this is the is the first subsystem for explaining the speak signal. The second subsystem is the movement of the vocal folds that you can be see bottom right, and to the left you can see uh, the um, glotto signal. Uh, as you can. Uh, it's possible to check here, here to respond to the closing phase, which is much faster than the um, opening phase due to different forces uh, behind the movement. Um, after this, the, the source of the sound, it's normally either the focal folds, as we can see here, but you can also see turbulent noise generated in some a part of the vocal tract, for, for instance, for fricatives and plosives. After the generation of the sound, the sound um, flows through the vocal tract, which is formed by the oral tract and the nasal tract, when the, um, the velum is opening, opened. And here you can see um, the movement of the uh, speech articulators during speech uh, using the, uh, um, um, an image of uh, um, uh, um, this of these um, uh, images correspond to the articulation but acoustics in terms of acoustics the speech sound is explained uh, by the combination of uh, two possible sources of sound generation, a voice source, which uh, can be uh, where a fundamental frequency for which a fundamental frequency can be associated, and an unvoiced source, as in the case of fricatives and plosives, and, uh, uh, which I explained uh, a few seconds ago. Um, the combination of the two can be made, or only one of the sources, there's some gain in, uh, involved, and after that, uh, the, the, the sound wave uh, crosses the vocal tract, which is can be understood as a filter uh, with the corresponding filter coefficient, coefficients, and, uh, and the speech signal is generated. The filtering part explains um, uh, the intensity of the, uh, of the several uh, frequency regions of, of the of the speech signal, of course, uh, is is the same for animal vocalizations. As here you can see at the top, um, the waveform, 
uh, some pressure uh, here and, and time uh, from left to right uh, the horizontal axis. At the bottom you can see a broadband spectrogram where we can find the regions of more energy which are uh, has a, a higher level of gray as you can see here and this indicates in that this indicates for the speech of course the, the, the regions where form and resonance act and uh, explain this the different qualities of the sounds um, the vertical bars it that you can see here represents um, the um, uh, vibration of the vocal folds and it's important for the understanding of phenomena such as intonation in speech. Uh, of course, this um, uh, this diagram, this uh, this image, which is was covered at the beginning, the visible speech, is uh, understood is generated as a bank of filters where uh, the energy. Uh, that is painted in different levels of gray here is obtained after passing by a bandpass filter, filter centered at uh, different bands uh, of frequency that uh, in fact uh, explain the, uh, the, the different um, levels of gray that you can see uh, at in uh, an uh, instant of time um, from left to right uh, in the spectrogram. Um, well, uh, after this first uh, um, notions, I present to you the possibilities of um, uh, tasks in Pratt, uh, rotation, spectral, duration of zero, and density analysis. Okay. Here uh, we have the Pratt objects window. And I separate for you here uh, some demonstrations. The first one is uh, for a speech. As you can see here, uh, we have uh, the waveform at the top, in the middle, the spectrogram. We can use uh, zoom effects uh, to show um, more easily the frequencies here, the resonances, the format frequencies uh, here. I can I am illustrating the annotation capabilities of Pratt. I um, as a researcher I decide to for 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 this to have four tiers, a phrase, a word, a syllable and a phone tier. You can see it's a part of the of a phrase. Em seguida apareceu um papagaio real. Yeah, I segmented this phrase into words. Em seguida Apareceu um papagaio. For instance. Real. Here I separate the syllables. Here the, the stress syllable of the, of the word papagaio. 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 Esse um. Esse um. Gip. Gip. Yeah, and the effects of uh, context explain why this is so strange uh, when you hear. Gip. The syllable separate from the word. Seguida. Seguida, seguida. And the words separate from the from the phrase, and at the bottom you have the thoughts. Okay, and this can be used in any kind of, of signal, uh, including uh, animal vocalization. The second demonstration uh, illustrates the. The DMLP dot shop vocalization, as you can hear here. Here I use the annotation, uh, Pratt annotation capa uh, pos uh, capabilities to uh, mark the beginning and the end of this vocalization, which uh, lasts almost one second. Here you can hear, see, 0.939 uh, second. And here I separate this, the several pulses of this organization. Okay, and uh, here is the possibility to have what is called a point tier, where the possibility of um, um, uh, let uh, fixed 
that point where some kind, uh, a particular measure can be obtained, for instance, a Fourier spectrum. Okay, and uh, continue with the demonstration. I, the product has the possibility of filtering. I filter, I filter the, this, uh, the first sound, uh, using a, a low band filter uh, to 350 hertz in order to to, to see if I can uh, compute uh, the rate of, uh, of the pulses and uh, as you can see comparing the, the two sounds to see the difference uh, the other one is the filter one and from this one okay, uh, the, the, um, the periods uh, between the pulses are emphasized then when I compute the spectrum, the distance between the harmonics represent the rate of this about 15, 16 hertz is the rate of this vocalization, which of course can be measured directly here. If you divide the duration, uh, the number of pulses by the duration it has exactly 16 pulses per second. This is the duration of each pulse, if it is necessary to be studied. And to other kinds of duration, for instance, the duration of um, uh, during the formant acting, uh, the formant um, effects uh, in the vocal tract of the animal, we can see that he'll have. 22 milliseconds um, of the duration of these resonances. The third demonstration um, is um, of both intensity and frequency. I have a capybara bark, a danger here, whose duration is 138 milliseconds. Here I computed the spectrum, the Fourier spectrum of this marking, as you can see here. And this is about um, the fundamental frequency of this of this individual, about 500 hertz. And I filtered this sound in order to emphasize um, the fundamental frequency and see it's easier to see about 600 hertz the fundamental frequency the main uh, which uh, represents the main amplitude of this spectrum and this is another um, barking from the same individual but in a different situation feeding situation <laughs> and here you can uh, um, drawing the two spectra, the one of um, feeding in black and one in danger in red, and check that and see that we just normally use uh, the, 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 the difference between the intensity in a high frequency region uh, in comparison with the intensity in a low frequency region, normally to 100 hertz. You can see that. Uh, uh, by computing this, we uh, were able uh, to demonstrate that uh, in, in the case of the danger, the barking of the capybara has a, a higher relative intensity in the region 10 to 15 kilohertz in comparison with the low frequency region, demonstrating that they change um, um, the, the distribution of an, uh, an energy across the frequency and these two different behaviors. Okay, then I thank you very much. If you have questions, I'm able to respond to answer them. Thank you so much.